Hey everyone, I'm Tech Steve, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at the new Neo QLED television set from Samsung. Now, I have the QN85A that uses a panel called ADS IPS, so it's not going to have as good of contrast ratio as the VA panels, but in this video, we're going to take a look and see how good it really is. Now, if you go with the 90A, it's going to cost you more money, but you get the VA panel on that one, and I'll leave all the links that you need to know on both of these television sets and the description below. Wait, I think my television just arrived. Let me uh, let me go see if it's here and uh, we can start the video. All right, thanks a lot. Here you go. So when you take out the box, these are the two main pieces to hold up the television set. You get this metal base and you get this holder. Now when it comes to the holder, it has a wire maintenance piece that you can take off right there and it has the four screw holes that goes on the back of the TV set. Now when it comes to the base, the measurements are roughly around 15 inches by about 10 inches. So it's going to fit on just about any type of stand. You also get a quick setup guide. And if you need the full instruction manual, this will show you how to get to it. It also comes with the right angle power cord and you get the remote control. And this is the new model with the solar cell on the back of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you guys how to mount the TV set. Now I will tell you that it comes with two packs of screws and both of them has the exact same screws in it. So it doesn't matter which one you use. So after grabbing the base, you can see there's a notch here. We just take it, slide it on and it's locked in. Then you just take these four screws and insert it here and here. And you can see it's pretty sturdy once you get everything all mounted. The next thing you would do on the television set is there's a little lip right here. You just want to lift it up, make sure it's lined up, push down, and then you want to go ahead and insert the four screws into the back side of it. Then all you need to do is go ahead and plug in the power cord right here. Make sure it's in there snug. Then you want to go ahead and run the cable like this and then go ahead and snap this piece into place. Now, since we're already back here, let's go ahead and talk about the inputs on this television set. Now, looking at the back panel here, you have two USBs, and these could be used for any type of wireless device, including keyboards, mouse, or anything that you need to run off a USB, and they will work on thumb drives as well. Now, next you have a fiber optic output, and this could be used for going over to a soundbar or audio system. And yes, this TV set does have two HDMI 2.1s that supports up to 120 hertz. Now, the reason you have two HDMI 2.1s is that you would take one of them and run over to a gaming console like a PS5, Xbox Series X. And the second one could be for eARC for running over to a soundbar or a system that supports uncompressed 7.1 audio. Next, there's two more additional HDMIs. So there's a total of four of them and these will support HDMI 2.0. You also have a LAN connection for connected right to a router or a modem and you have an RG6 connection for hooking up over the air antennas or older cable boxes or systems like that. You can easily mount this on a wall thanks to these screw holes right here and the screws inside of them are M8 screws. Now it will work on just about any standard wall mount so you won't have a problem mounting on the wall. So when you take this TV set out of the box it has these little covers around the edges to protect the screen. So if you plan on moving one day make sure you go ahead and save those. And it clearly marks, do not remove until TV is assembled. Unlike other Samsung television sets, this one's clearly marked that it has a screen protector on it right here. Now, if you have a TU 8000 or 7000, do not attempt this. You will ruin the television set. And here's the energy savings guys. So you can see it's very efficient to run a TV set, even on a 55 inch. 
One thing I noticed about this TV set over the other TV sets that I reviewed is that this TV set is extremely fast and it does a really good job of upconverting signals that's not as good as 4K. Another thing you'll find impressive about this TV set is the viewing angle. So right now I'm in the front of it. Let's pick up the camera and move it over to the side. I have some cables connected. And look at this. This is a side view of this television set. And this is great if you have a large room, maybe it's a patio on one side, a kitchen on the other side, you're gonna be able to see this TV set no matter where you're looking at it from. Now, when it comes to a TV set like this, you would think the panel itself would be the only factor to make a TV look as good as it does, but that's not the case. This TV set has other technologies in it that cleans up the signal before it even reaches the panel. They call that the Neo Quantum Processor. Now, with that along with another technology called AI, upscaling makes everything look good. So the way it works is that if you send a signal to it, it could be a uh, VCR or any type of signal whatsoever, coming into the television set, it takes it and looks at the colors, the contrast, uh, everything that makes that picture, and then it cleans it up, outputs it out to the video card, and then you see it on the screen. So what that's gonna do for you guys is if you have a older uh, technology or if you don't always have 4K content, it's gonna make this TV set look good. Now, another thing that helps out with this panel is they call it UHD local dimming. And what that's gonna do is it's, it's broken up into like a grid. And what it does is it controls different sectors of the television set to control the black levels. So for example, if it sees that there's no uh, colors needed here, it'll shut down that particular one. So the black levels are gonna be a lot better. So with that local dimming and that processor, this TV set is pretty promising. And when it comes to the design, it has small bezels on it. So it looks more like a picture frame if mounted on the wall. And it floats on a small base, which I showed you guys earlier in the video. And like the previous models I showed you guys, you can see they moved the logo to the corner over here and set it on the top. And if you press on the bottom, you have some controls on the screen right there. And all you need to do is just press and hold the button to control that if you lose the remote control. Another thing that stands out on this TV set is that just physically picking it up, it's about twice as heavy as other televisions that I reviewed on this channel, like the TU-8000 or the 7000. And you can see it's very thin to the look, but one thing that makes me nervous is that this TV set doesn't seem as stable as some other television set. So, might want to consider mounting it on the wall if you get it or just don't touch it a lot. Now this TV set is powered by the Tizen 6.0 operating system that's available in 2021 model television sets that incorporates a few new features, including a game pop-up as well as a picture-in-picture, side-by-side, multi-view that you didn't get in the previous operating systems. So what I'm gonna do now is just kind of walk you guys through some of the different settings and show you guys in the menu system some black levels and things you, you can take custom control of. Now there's a few things you'll like about this TV set if you have a Samsung now, and it's the speed of the menu. So a lot of people complain about lag, but I've been using this TV all day and it's pretty fast. No matter what you give it, it just works really fast. Look at that, the response time. And again, it goes back to that processor, the RAM and everything in this TV set. Now there's a few other controls down here. If we take a look at the bottom, first you have the ambient mode where you can turn this TV set more to like a picture frame, we're not using it. You have the multi viewing, so if you click on that. And with this feature, you can have your smart device on one side of the screen while you're watching like a Samsung uh, TV on the other side of the screen so you can multitask and it, you can even save your settings if you want to. Next you have your app stores and I will tell you that it supports pretty much almost every app on the market out there. So you can see on the bottom here you have Samsung Plus, Disney, Apple TV. You also have uh, Amazon Alexa, Spotify. Only thing it doesn't support is a lot of IPTV just so you guys know. And now we have the search bar. And the next icon down here is called Digital Butler, and this basically shows you all the devices that are connected to your SmartThings application. Now, I can go over here to choose my sources. You can see I have the TV. I can also connect a PC to this television set, and then you have your connection guide and a few other things. Now, if I go over here to settings, this TV set has a feature called Intelligent Mode, and if you turn that on, you can see the difference in the picture quality. 
it's going to look at all the different settings and put that process to the work to clean up every single thing you run to this TV set completely automatic. Now, if you don't want that, you can choose through your different pictures mode. You have standard, natural, movie, dynamic. Then you have your different sound modes. You have amplified, standard. This is your TV outputs. You have fiber optic or TV. Then if you use gaming mode, you have to have an HDMI plugged into it. And you have your sleeper timer and connections. Now over here, you also have like your different uh, color tones. You have warm, cool, standard. And you also have picture clarity. So I usually leave everything on automatic. If we click into settings real quick, just want to show you guys something real quick. If you go to expert settings, this is where you can control the local dimming. You can see they're standard, low, and high. And then you also have a contrast enhancer that's going to clean up some of those black levels as well. Another thing I showed you guys is under general, you can go over here and again, you can turn on the intelligent mode and you can select different things like your voice amplifier, your adaptive sound, adaptive volume. So these are again, part of that intelligent mode. And you can use Bixby built into the voice control remote control, or you can switch to Amazon Alexa or Google, but you'll need to log into those accounts if you uh, want to use those features. Now under external device manager, you can hook up a Bluetooth device like headphones, keyboards, wireless mouse, and there are some different settings to control that. And if you go back on the main screen, there is a web browser built into this TV set. So you can use the remote control right here, or you can plug in that keyboard or mouse. And this is what the browser looks like. Don't expect to play a lot of different files like video files on this browser because it's very limited. But if you want to control it, you can use a USB keyboard or mouse or a Bluetooth like I showed you guys earlier. So pretty cool. Now I'm going to show you guys what it looks like on some gaming, but to check the input lag, my tester only goes up to 60 Hertz where this television set supports up to 120 Hertz. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of results we get. The second thing is I haven't purchased a 120 Hertz game and my camera only films at 60 Hertz. So I'm not going to be able to test all that today, but I'll at least give you guys a general idea of what it looks like. Now we're going to check the input lag right now. I just have it on your standard uh, mode with no changes. And it looks like it's reading about 87.2. So let's put it in gaming mode to see if it drops. And it dropped down to about 9.5, which is pretty standard for a television set like this. And it might even get faster if I had 120 Hertz uh, tester, but uh, that's respectable. And that's about where all the other television sets uh, do for a Samsung. So no big improvement right there. Now this is the PlayStation 5 connected to the television set. Now the cool thing is if you go into the settings of the Samsung television set and go down here to general, then click on external device manager, you have a lot of new settings. So when you press on it, you have gaming mode, you can turn it off and on. You also have surround settings. So if you do want to create a 3D surround off the game, you can do that with internal speakers. Over here, you have dynamic black EQ. So if it's not looking that good for you, you can adjust that, you can see right there. Then you have a feature called Game Motion Plus. Now, one thing I like about this particular feature on this TV set is that it does make everything just a little bit darker. It has a feature called Blur Reduction, Judder Reduction, and Clear Motion. And for all you gamers out there, this TV set does have Motion Accelerated Turbo Plus that's gonna make everything look a lot smoother when playing gaming. Also, it has FreeSync Premium Pro it does have automatic gaming mode, so whenever it sends a game, it will switch over automatic. But I don't see a feature for VRR, which is variable refresh rate. Speaking of soaring, get a load of that jump. There you have it, folks. The numbers are going through. The so if you've been following my channel, you probably already know that I'm not a big gamer, but playing that game, it immersed me with the audio and also the pictures. So 
What I'm gonna do now is for those who are worried about the ADS panel being not that good, I'm gonna give you guys my honest opinion. So what we're gonna do is test the contrast ratio. Then I'm gonna play a couple of videos that I've showed you guys on other channels and I'm not gonna go in and try to readjust all the colors because I bought this TV set, Samsung's not sponsoring it, so we can pretty much just be honest about things. So uh, let's go check it out. Now I have this TV set at factory settings, so we're gonna check the contrast and I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys with what I see. So looking directly on the television set, I can notice there's a little bit of like white in that area right there, but overall, it is something that I can deal with. As I move over to the side of the TV set, it seems to get a little bit more washed out. So overall, if you're gonna watch something with a lot of black scenes, and sitting in front of the TV set, it's gonna look good. Over to the side, you're just gonna see like this little bit of white haze. Let's try another one. On this demo, I can't really see any kind of issues with the contrast. And one thing that really stands out to me is that this TV set is bright. <laughs> so if you're gonna be watching Netflix 4K or something like that on it, you're gonna definitely, definitely see that it is completely bright. Now, this is probably the one of the brightest TV sets I've ever reviewed here. And I'm looking on the screen to see if I see any flaws in the alignment here. So I don't know about you guys, I don't really see too much in the gray areas, but if you do, please comment below. Tell me what you guys think. So after watching those demos, what do you guys think? In fact, what I've seen so far, I can live with it. I mean, a VA panel is much darker, but the brightness and all the details that you get, I really enjoy this television set. Now, I will tell you that the thing I didn't mention here was this remote control. This is the solar cell remote control. It has a solar panel that charges the battery, and on the bottom of it, you can connect it to a computer or power source and charge it up. Now, when it comes to the price of the TV set, you're looking at $1,600 for the smallest one. This one was $1,600 plus tax, so it was around $1,700 some change to get it here to film this video for you. And if you want an 85 inch, look up to $4,499 plus tax and everything to get a TV that size. Now, it comes down to this question, is it for you? I think there's two different types of TV buyers. There's one that's looking for bargains and there's one that looks for performance. So if you're the person who looks for performance, this is what you wanna go for. So other than that, I'd like to see you guys' comments below and uh, let's see uh, if we can see if this is a great television set for everyone or if it's just a novelty. So I'm Tech Steve, thanks a lot for watching and I'll catch you guys on my next video. Peace.